When I think of windows, I just think like a portal into something else. You know, on the other side of a window is a different environment, but it gives you that opportunity to just peek in and kind of see what's there. Philadelphians, we're like super prideful people. We're prideful of our neighborhood, we're prideful of our city. But it's real out here. Like, we're still in the middle of North Philly. We're still in the Badlands. Like, literally being in this zip code versus being in the zip code on the other side of those buildings, there's a 20-year difference in life expectancy. These places are less than three miles apart. The people who look like me and are from where I'm from, what we know best is culture. Right? When we didn't have anything, the things that got us through, the things that were valuable were our songs, our dances, right? The, 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 the spoken word. So it's about saying, okay, if that's what we know best, let's teach people business through that. Having establishments like Rec, it's about teaching ownership. It's about teaching equity. But without having those spaces, bro, it's easy to start thinking you're crazy. <laughs> you know we do it, how did it fire? Don't you flew it, tell us where it's at, we gonna get to Rap means resources for every creator. It's all about helping creatives really understand themselves as creative entrepreneurs. The way we do that is with our creative incubator, our 10,000 square foot creative space, but also with our creative agency, which allows us to work with brands of all sizes while employing our members to get paid to do what it is they love to do. Our members, our creators, they don't come from families of business owners. They're the first business owners in their family. And that's really what REC is about. When it comes to finding investors, some people in the beginning said, oh, you're supporting artists? Oh, you're a 5013C, you're a nonprofit. And we'd be like, no, we can build a profitable model and we're gonna show you how. It's so important to have the right people around you because those voices become either the echo chamber that keeps you going or the voices that are gonna talk you out of your dream. Honestly, you could just go right up here at Germantown Ave, and Wayne Junction is where my peoples is from. And now, you know, after my uncle was murdered, unfortunately, um, when he was 16, my grandmother was like, nah, we, we gotta get out of here. Lord, no. Will was the kind of child, always in the thinking mode. He was always the way he is now. If I can get that child off this block, I know he's gonna be somebody. I saw, you know, my uncle died of gun violence. I saw my dad get incarcerated. He's serving a 30 to 60. Like, I've seen my mom battle drug addiction. You know, it was a big culture shock, you know, going to a predominantly white high school. Everything was just a little different. He always knew what he wanted to do. Even when him and Leonzo and Dave, they be bouncing around on my living room table, I said, yo, stop moving my living room around, guys. <laughs> You get a little dead fish, John. <laughs> Early on, the first business I ever started, 21 years old, Dave and I started a production company to support Leonzo's music career. So I came here and, you know, this building is a refurbished old window factory. They've essentially broken the space out into these private studios for folks. Long story short, me and Leonzo decided that we're gonna move into this warehouse. Between you and I, we weren't supposed to be living here. The fact that our friends always wanted to stay here and we could all pitch up on rent to be able to start growing the resources we had, I'm sitting back and I'm like, yo, like, why hasn't resource sharing come to the entertainment space? And there was a moment where I'm sleeping on the couch and it's raining super hard to the point where there's literally a drip of water just like dripping right on my forehead. I call up Dave in the middle of the night and I'm like, yo, bro. And he's like, yo. Phone rings immediately. I said, what's up, Will? He goes, you ready to be a millionaire? And he goes, I said, absolutely. And I go, space. He goes, space. I said, OK. And that was it. That was the beginning yeah. of the record. So we realized this idea of having a place would be the foundation that folks could come to consistently, build relationships, create content, try to make sure that these resources were accessible to folks. If you're a bootstrapped company, it's really important to focus on getting to profitability as soon as you can. But for us, it was only possible because we designed the model to do that from day one. So we got to a point in our business where, you know, we're in the warehouse, we've got our seven rooms here with all the studios, our programming is consistently sold out, and we're really bursting at the seams. So for myself and my business partner, we really had to make a decision and say, what does growth look like? I pulled it up on the screen. Um, it was a blueprint of the fashion district. I mean, it was a whole floor plan of the entire second floor of, of the mall. Um, Crazy. You know, that was pie in the sky. As the time went on and they asked for plans. Like, All right, we'll put a, we'll put a plan put a together. together. Like, this plan is like multi-millions of dollars worth in a plan. I don't know who has the multi-millions of dollars. Like, 
we don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Even if we did know how to do it, we wouldn't know what to do with that money even if we got it. And the mom's like, we love this. You have the money for it? Like, no, but <laughs> we can't, we will. <laughs> I said, like, we can get the money. <laughs> Fundraising at its core is really just a game of storytelling. It's about being able to articulate what's the problem you're looking to solve, why are you best positioned to solve that problem, and then what do you need from them to solve it, and most importantly, what's in it for them when the problem is solved. For our business, we didn't go after traditional VCs for our first round. We went after angels. It was more about who are the people who see the world in the future the same way we do. We went out and we would just find those folks. We got probably 50 or 60 no's before we got our first yes. Yeah, no, I have a spreadsheet of 270 people. Jesus um, Christ, that's yeah. even more than I thought. Yeah, it was 100. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember our, our, first, um, our first investment coming through, and that was like, there's a, there's a chance that this, this might happen. childhood traumas as daily mantras. The time to figure out where to spend the money is not when you get it. It's way before. So for us, it was important to like never get excited because now for the first time ever, we've got a million, two million, three million in the bank, right? Because it's only gonna be there for a short amount of time and then you gotta actually deploy it to get that space, to pay your people. So in our minds, we were already giving away 20% of the company for cash. The grand vision is to get hundreds of employees when we have 30 of these facilities around the country. Let's check me. <laughs> <laughs> the white team is not winning. <laughs> I think there was a really stark difference about halfway through our funding journey. What I was doing was I was putting all of the value on the other side of the table. And the way I showed up for the second half of our fundraising was much different. It was, hey man, I really want to invite you into this opportunity that we have. And it was an energy of, this is gonna happen with or without you, but I want to give you the chance to be a part of something special. Most times, the people you're getting money from are winners. And winners only want to bet on winners. <laughs> <laughs> There's the, the inner work, especially for black entrepreneurs that, you know, is a very nuanced experience that white entrepreneurs don't deal with. I'm learning that this whole idea around business and equity is a bit more personal for us. As black people, we were wealth before there was wealth because we came over to this country on a balance sheet. So the name of the game for us now is to understand how we can acquire wealth for ourselves because the whole purpose of us being in America was to build that wealth for others. So our freedom is wrapped up in, in the idea of owning equity, whether we like it or not. Not too long ago, I got stopped at a traffic stop. Out of nowhere, the cop tells me there's a warrant for my name. Long story short, I spent a week in prison. Come to find out, there was a process in the area and I wasn't supposed to be in there. And you want to know even the crazier intricacies, like the time before that I was in that building was me visiting my pop. And that was really the spark for me, like I have to build this relationship with him. You know, as a kid, I never thought the relationship with my dad was important because I don't know if I really forgave him. But after that experience, it was, nah, there's not many relationships more important than this one. This is a call from Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution. Look, I'm here right now getting ready for this little dinner I'm putting together. You know, we just got that Forbes win. Okay, first I just want to say this is like amazing, man. I'm so proud of my son, you know, to come so far from what he's been through, you know, as his dad, you know, I, I just wish I could have been there more, you know, to share with him, but just, this makes my heart full. I just envision everybody around supporting him, showing love, you know, raising a glass, toasting, you know, just positive conversation, great food, because that's what I can't wait to do when I get out and eat some real damn food, and, you know, just giving the accolades and the rest of the people in the room that deserve it, you know, at a time like this, with us losing so many people, we got promised tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's just how I look at it, just something amazing. This is only the beginning. Making Forbes 30 under 30, that's just a powerful thing for me to reflect on as I set the next goal. 30 cities, 100,000 creators, pushing the culture forward and doing right by your community can look a lot of different ways. Yeah, I think I've found my path for that. <laughs> <laughs>